Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at a KitchenAid Burr coffee grinder model KCG8433. This particular one is finished in charcoal gray and overall I think it looks really nice. It has a premium digital display and as we'll see more of in a couple minutes, is very quiet, at least when compared to cheaper options. It does ship in a retail quality box, so if one is presenting as a gift, it will take wrapping well. In case anyone has any doubts, this is of course a burr grinder, meaning it will produce very uniform grinds. If we take a look inside, we get the motor unit, an airtight grind container, the bean hopper, and a little one cup scooper. Everything you'll need to get going, minus the coffee. Alright guys, to use the KitchenAid Conical Burr Grinder, uh, we do start with a little assembly. There's a couple tabs up here on the uh, bean hopper. It slides up and locks into place. Uh, below that, we have our grind size setting all the way from espresso uh, up to French press. And if you'll notice, as I adjust the grind size, um, it automatically will just kind of gives you a visual indication here on the grind size display. And it also adjusts the grind time to uh, theoretically create the perfect uh, volume for your number of requested cups and grind size. Uh, if you want to increase the number of cups, there's another button right here. And you can go anywhere from one up to 12 on all settings, except for espresso. And this is a little bit of a quirk with this machine that I'm not a fan of. Basically, if you are on espresso, you're limited to just two shots. Presumably, that's because they're expecting you to use this porta filter holder, which I'll admit is pretty cool. There's a little magnetic catch on there and it just kind of snaps into place. Um, has a side for 54 and 58 millimeter porta filters, which are the two common sizes, and then that just slides in there. And you can grind directly into it. Um, I personally like to pre-grind my espresso, so the fact that I'm just limited to two shots at a time is a little bit annoying if I'm being honest, um, because as soon as you go back to drip and above, you're given the full range. So, you know, it's a quirk. Uh, this of course just pulls out magnetically and then slides back in there. There are a couple of spring tension pins right here that hold the bottom plate on. So when you press the grind container into place, it forms a pretty tight seal with the unit here, so it should be uh, pretty clean. Uh, then when you're filled up here, you snap that over and you have a little airtight container to store things. Um, if you find the machine is going a little light or a little heavy on the grinds, you can micro adjust it here. So this thing rotates and you can adjust the grind time. Um, and then once you have it dialed in, you can hit that program button and it'll kind of offset everything by however much you changed it here. Then if you ever kind of get it wonky and you want to reset everything, just hold that program button for three seconds and it'll kind of factory restore everything. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, basic operation. To really get going, we'll obviously need to add some magic beans to the hopper. Don't worry about leaving them in there, as the lid seals it up pretty tight in between fillings. As I mentioned earlier, this unit is very quiet. In fact, it's the first thing I noticed when grinding for the first time. It was a very pleasant surprise. Of course, the term quiet is a relative one. So to demonstrate, I've got my decibel meter set up and will run the new KitchenAid next to my older, but still very functional Cuisinart that I consider very loud. and we're looking at about 76 decibels, about the same level as city traffic. But how about that old Cuisinart? Ouch, that's registering in the low 90s. We're talking power tool loud. Remember, the decibel scale is logarithmic, so a difference of 15 to 20 is really a lot. All right, guys, I wanted to just show you here sort of the consistency and size of the grinds. Uh, starting on the left is the French press. I'm not exactly sure how this is going to come across on camera. I'm going to try and get close here, but focusing might be an issue. Uh, so looks like very, very evenly sized grounds there. 
right in the middle we have drip which you know little uh, smaller granules starting to get kind of hard to see there and then all the way to the right is that espresso which is really just kind of a fine powder if you will but again you know it's probably hard to see on camera but the uh, consistency of the grind size is excellent before finishing this video out, I did want to draw a bit of attention to this unit's height. It's quite tall at 15 and a quarter inches, so if you're planning on leaving this out, make sure you've got room as that might prove to be a problem if your cabinets are mounted close to your countertops. So overall, I'm very happy with this purchase and consider it a big upgrade over my older unit. I'm especially happy with its noise profile being much quieter than what I'm used to. The only criticism I have regards the espresso grind settings, I find the fact you're limited to just two shots a bit annoying, but that's a really nitpicky complaint. I'm not going to lie, this unit is a little pricey, but I also feel that it earns its premium sticker. Oftentimes you are paying for a name, but in this case you really are getting a higher performance product by spending a bit more money.